Well, my absolutely beautiful Pisces friends, and welcome to your horoscope for May of 2021. Where Pisces this month, we have got a lunar eclipse in the works that is actually going to activate your 10th house right at the tip top of the chart. So this one has some importance, and it also has some impact not only on the 10th house, but the 4th house as well. As we travel through this Gemini Sagittarian axis, I think it's very significant for you this year what's happening at home and at work. So we'll talk about that impact as it's happening throughout the month. But we've also got Jupiter moving home into your sign. Wink, wink. That is very exciting stuff because Jupiter is the traditional ruler of your sign in the first place. You've also got Neptune, the co-ruler or the other ruler over in your sign as well. So it's like the gang's all back together. And that is a wonderful energy. But Jupiter will just be coming for a short tour here. But ultimately, the impact importance I think of May to July with Jupiter in Pisces energy feeling that influence Pisces is that you know at a core level that there are greater horizons available to you this isn't the end like this is this is not all that there is and that even if it is not something you could see coming it's going to be fabulous and there is more available to you. And I think that Jupiter coming through that tour of Pisces really lets you know that. Now we've also got Saturn and Mercury taking retrogrades this month. So I will tell you that as great as I think the month has the potential to be and the clarity you get, some of that clarity really does come from slowing down. We're going to slow down because the retrograde energy is going to increase, which means it's not this heavy push forward. Instead, it's like I need to review the bones and the structure and the why and the discipline of why I'm doing things and my belief structures. That is going to be a thing that becomes really important over this next four months, okay? All right, let's get in here and talk about what's going on this month. So right at the beginning of the month on the 3rd, we've got Mercury coming into the energy of Gemini. And right behind that on the 8th, we're going to welcome Venus into the energy of Gemini. Now, both of these are going to light up your 4th house space. So the 4th house gets busy. There's conversation. There's decisions. There's contracts. There's negotiation. There's Venus and Gemini may be really good conversations around relationships and money. Now, the 3rd, or excuse me, the 4th house, home. Family, real estate, property, your roots and foundations, women in your life, things that are even coming from the past. I also, when I think about fourth house and I think about things like real estate, I also think um, a little bit more mundane, like, you know, the infrastructure around you. There could be conversations happening in your community, in development of your city, planning in your city, things like that that are going on. So at this particular time too, especially with the pandemic, all over the world, I think we have to consider home as bigger than just our small spaces, but also what's happening in our communities as well. So either way, with Gemini energy, lots of networking definitely happening. And my goodness, if you've been working from home or something like that, you are definitely building that network as this month goes on, having those conversations, podcasts, and everything else. On the 11th, we've got a new moon happening in the energy of Taurus at 21 degrees. Now, this is going to light up your third house space. This particular moon is in nice connection with Neptune, your ruling planet, but also with Pluto. So because it's a new moon and we plant our seeds of intention here to begin something new or to get fresh eyes, a newness, an intuitive, instinctive newness that we want to bring out into our lives. In the third house, this has to do with your communications, sharing your information information, sharing your skills, studying, um, maybe even things with your siblings or neighbors or, you know, traffic and things like that, transportation in your neighborhood. But ultimately, Pisces, I think so much of this has to do with you sharing your voice and your skills at some level, whether it's teaching, whether it's studying, whatever it is, it's a wonderful energy to do a lot of learning, but in a very hands-on way. Now, the connection with Neptune and Pluto, I think, allows you the courage to transform and then go bring those ideals forward so that you can really take advantage of what this Taurus energy in a very material plane is trying to bring to you. You know, did you finally... 
um, or are you feeling encouraged to write that book so that Taurus can bring you the connections and the money that come with putting something material into the planet, you know, out into the world. So whatever that looks like to stimulate that area of your chart, just make sure you check 21 degrees of Taurus, okay? On the 13th, we see Jupiter moving home into your sign right there in the first house. Now remember, this is just a sneak peek. So you want to make note of what's happening and expanding at this time, but this is not the full meal deal. We'll get that December 28th through 2022 when Jupiter actually comes to do his tour through your sign. But another thing that you can do, Pisces, is think back to like 2010, 2011 when Jupiter was... Um, toying in Pisces energy as well. What was happening for you? What was the expansion? What was the wisdom that was coming to the table? How were you changing? Did you feel like your, your horizons were broader, like there was more available to you? Because this is a lot of what will be brought to your table, I think, um, as you travel through this July, May, July timeframe. The other thing is, is when Jupiter comes to the first house, we can just expand. You may find yourself eating a ton or maybe you're having a baby or something like that but this can definitely in that first house bring a body expansion as well so i will tell you to just be mindful of that it's you know being at home I've got a couple COVID pounds I can make up for too, okay? So just be mindful. On the 20th, we see the sun now entering into the energy of Gemini. So home, the focus of home, finishing repairs, What's going on at home? Do I feel like there's life and vitality in my home? Uh, conversations, all of these things now will have the heat of the sun where you're motivated to take care of these things. You're motivated to have that conversation. You're motivated to make these decisions, teach that class, whatever it is. The home zone will be busy because Gemini is busy. On the 23rd, we see Saturn moving into its retrograde at 13 degrees of Aquarius, and it will come out of its retrograde October 10th at 6 degrees of Aquarius. Now, this is in that, that 12th house space, so just one house behind you, okay? So as Saturn is taking this retrograde, you have the opportunity to review where you need more structure or more freedom or maybe even an innovation, a breaking from what has been and an opening into what can be for you. And you started seeing this influence really in March of 2020 when we had that first little step of Saturn into Aquarius. But then when Saturn officially moved into Aquarius in December of 2020, you've really been seeing where you need some crystallizing, where things got to come out of hiding. You got to empty that closet because your secrets are keeping you sick, right? It's this space where even if the secret is that I'm a creative genius and I'm a really good actor, I can sing, I have mental illness, I did this, I did that, the secret will keep you sick. So as Saturn travels back in this retrograde, it's shown you all sorts of things from the past that do not work, cannot stick anymore. They need to be addressed. It will spiritualize, but spiritually innovate this area for you. And the Saturn retrograde is going to take you back over everything it's already shown you and start to offer you an opportunity to apply an evolved set of actions and beliefs and behaviors to spiritualize and take this area of your life to the next level, okay? On the 26th, we've got a full moon lunar eclipse happening at five degrees of Sagittarius. Now, this is going to be tip top of the chart at that midheaven. The 10th house is career, it's soul level calling, your reputation, but it is also your status. And when I say status, were you the boss and now you're the regional boss? Were you not married and now you're married? Were you, you know, whatever it is that changes your title and how we know you in public, this is also a pretty defining house for looking at that. Now, the eclipse is still our full moon for the month, so it is saying something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to make a fundamental adjustment here. Now, an eclipse is a blotting out. So this will reset your consciousness. And an eclipse, and especially this one for you, Pisces, I don't think is entirely subtle. You may have a lot of clear clarity, depending on how this is already manifesting for you, but I definitely don't think it's subtle. An eclipse at the midheaven will also shake the IC. So home and work are definitely getting a revamping here, and you need to see what needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. Is it time for you to leave that career? Is it time for you to um, stop doing what you've been doing? Is it valuable? Is it, is it helping you achieve? What are your ideas, Sagittarius, that have governed this area 
of your life for a very long time because maybe you don't have to quit that job, but the ideas of what you had about what it means to work or to provide or to be a wife or to be a husband or to be the regional manager, your attitude and your ideals and your beliefs are changing around it. Now, this particular moon is also going to square its ruler, so I don't think that you make these changes just overnight. I think you need every bit of this six months to really get yourself in solid position to understand how your idea and your philosophy base has changed. Now, this is also Sagittarian energy. If there are legal things that need to come to the table, I definitely think this is the time that that might happen. You've got an active fourth house. So, you know, if it's, I want to leave this company and start my own, maybe that activation of the fourth house energy is also helping you find your new rental space or your new office space, your new home base. So whatever that looks like in manifestation for you, um, just keep that in mind that this is the influence it's probably bringing in. Now, as we close out this month on the 29th, we'll see Mercury in that fourth house space, Gemini, taking its retrograde at 24 degrees of Gemini. So what you've been seeing this month, what you've been acknowledging, and it's been in your consciousness, it's been in your mouth, it's been in your conversation in this Gemini area of the fourth house, now you'll spend the next few weeks reviewing that, revising it, having conversations about it. You know, for some people... I do think that this lunar eclipse, in addition to the solar eclipse that's going to be coming um, in Gemini energy as well, may put you in a position where you um, want to relocate. That could just be, you could move. You're like, I we got to move. This is not working. Or you've remodeled your house or something like that. So it's a fundamental rearrangement. And maybe now with the Mercury retrograde, you're able to re-engage your space again. So I look forward to seeing how this is manifesting for you. Let me know in the comment section down below. Bye, my beautiful Pisces.